All right, and so the last step before we can actually start prepping these pieces for finish is to put in our top and die holes. So top and die is basically making it so that I can put in threaded screws that are gonna be removable. These are the little bolts that I'm gonna be using. As you can see, they have a hex head on one side and they go pretty far in. I think these are one and a quarter inches long, so they fit nicely into these post legs without going all the way through. And so the reason for I wanna use these is because I wanna make sure that the back panel that's gonna go between these two cases is easily removable. And so I was gonna to wait to do these holes uh, until I had the cases together and I could get a little bit better of an idea of what I was doing. But I think it's gonna be safer if I just do get it done now because it's gonna be a lot easier to fix any mistakes I make and it'll be easier to just handle these pieces on the drill press and just anywhere else. Uh, because they're much smaller, I can actually use them on the drill press. If I have them set up in the whole case construction, uh, they won't be, I won't be able to get them on the drill press. So it's gonna be much easier this way. And so with these bolts, I'm gonna follow the same principle as I did with the dowels. Uh, we're gonna be putting two of the bolts on the bottom stretcher and then one bolt on the top. Uh, again, this is just because the bottom stretcher is actually gonna go all the way across. It's gonna be a much more solid connection. And I wanna make sure that it's a much more, it's much more solid by having the two bolts in there. Plus it'll just kind of balance a little bit nicer. Then on the top, again, matching everything else we've done on here, just having the one bolt will balance a little bit better. And so that's what our light looks like with those bolts in place. And so if I could go back to about 20 minutes ago before I started doing this, there is two things I would change. First off, I would go with one inch bolts instead of the one and a quarter inch that I've got here. That extra quarter inch that I've got on there isn't really doing too much. Uh, it's basically, well, it is adding a little bit of extra holding strength, but it also came very, very close to making it so these don't actually fit in here. Because when you're tapping a hole for threads in wood, you need to make sure, if you're, especially if you're not going all the way through like we're trying to avoid doing here, uh, you have to make sure that there's a plenty of space underneath that bolt for wood chips and that to build up or for the actual tap to reach all the way past where you need it to go. So we are right on the precipice of these not actually fitting. Uh, so we are, yeah, I'd probably go with one inch. And so the other thing I would do is I'd move my, my mortises back closer to the middle of these pieces rather than moving them out where they are. Now in my plans, I had them right in the middle of these boards, right the same as the rest of our mortises here. But again, I would go back in and inset these heads so that they would be flush with the surface. It's a little too late to do that now because we are only a quarter of an inch away and these heads are, I would guess, about an eighth of an inch thick. And so that would only leave an eighth of an inch material for them to actually grab onto on the outer edge here and I, that would probably break. So I'm not gonna do that because I just don't think it would work as well. But again, it's all minor, minor things. So they do go in there, they hold in nicely. They don't come out, you need an Allen wrench to actually get them out, which is exactly what you want it to be. And so when I get those tenons fitted up there, I will be able to drill those holes, drill them with a clearance bit, and then make them work just as nicely. So we're gonna stop doing what you guys just saw me doing. So I picked up this machine last night in order to help me actually finish this project. Uh, for a lot of other reasons, which we'll get to in just a second here, but yes, for, to finish this project, I wanted this machine. Because there's so many small parts in that in this project, standing there and hand sanding and planing all those parts was just gonna be kind of a nightmare. And so this machine is gonna help me get it done a lot faster and a lot more enjoyably. So this is the 1632 Supermax drum sander. It has a 16 inch width and you can go up to 32 inches if you run things through twice because it has an open end on it. Now, so what I wanna start by saying is that I don't wanna give any false impressions to anyone that watches my videos. 
I'm not a full-time woodworker. I don't make a ton of money. I think I only make, you know, probably close to three or four hundred dollars a month off of my woodworking. Um, and yeah, I'm not a full-time woodworker. I don't make a huge profit off of it. Uh, and yeah, buying a machine like this was all out of my own money and really punched me in the gut because of the, the price of this machine. So that's all, you know, full transparency there. So a machine like this is not cheap. And when you're not doing it, when you're not a full-time woodworker, it seems like a little bit of an excessive expense. And so there's kind of two reasons why I bought this machine. First off is woodworking is my dream. It's currently my hobby. It's something that I want to do for the rest of my life. And I would love to get into selling stuff more affordably and efficiently. And so a machine like this lets you get through that sanding phase a lot quicker, which means which then cuts down time and makes your products overall a little bit cheaper. So that's all in one aspect is a really good thing because it also means I don't have to stand there and hand sand everything, which is just really annoying. The other reason that I wanted this machine was to solve a lot of the current problems I have. As you can see, my planer right here is a really cheap uh, Home Depot planer. It's the rigid 13-inch planer. It's got tons and tons of issues. You guys, if you've watched any of my other videos, you've seen me talk about that. Whereas this machine is a very high-end machine that will solve the issues of that, will allow me to work with really thin stock as well as really short stock, and will, again, help finish with the whole sanding process. So this machine not only does the one thing of fixing the issues that that has, but also helps just kind of all around the shop with helping me do some more interesting stuff. This machine also adds the ability to do more creative stuff, like inlays and that are, you can do them with, you know, your other machinery, but doing them with a drum sander like this is just a hell of a lot easier. And so I know there are a few woodworkers who watch my channel that are fairly new to it and just kind of figuring out where they want to go and, you know, find projects and that. And you're probably looking at this machine and going, oh, I really wish I had one of those. And well, I'm going to recommend that you just wait and figure out what you want to do. And so a machine like this is not for every woodworker out there. Depending on the style of woodworking you do, you might be better off buying like a really high-end Festool uh, random orbit sander. You know, if you're doing a lot of stuff with large panels, a random orbit sander is going to do a lot better work than something like this. What this is really good for is the stuff that you guys have seen me build so far. Things with a lot of pieces. Again, on this project alone, this stack of small pieces here is for one side panel and we have four of them to get through. So it's stuff like that that really makes a drum sander an absolute time saver and life saver. Because again, having to go through and hand sand all those pieces, and we're gonna be doing that same detail that we do where we lower all the depth of all of our you know, vertical divider pieces and that. Doing that on a drum sander where I can just get it to a set depth run the pieces through, change the depth, and go, you know, slowly work away the material. Uh, but I can do it across all of my pieces at once rather than do having to do it one at a time with a hand plane is a much, much more efficient way of working and much more enjoyable because not only are you not having to physically do anything, but all of your dust is getting sucked up through the dust extraction port here. So it's way more accurate, way cleaner to do, and takes little to no physical effort. So before I jumped in and started doing all the pieces all at once on the drum sander here to get them all consistently sized, I decided to just get one side done because before I went out and bought this thing, I'd actually gotten started on one of the sides just to see how much longer it was going to take me. And so this is the outermost right side and I started by hand planing and sanding all of our cross stretchers. So the top, the middle, and the bottom one were all hand planed and sanded up to 180 grit. And then all of our vertical dividers I went through and did on the drum sander here. So it's actually worked a lot better than I ever would have imagined. And we do have some minor issues here and there that I'm gonna have to correct with you know, hand sanding and hand planing later on. 
uh, purely because I started by hand sanding the top pieces so they're not perfectly flat. Whereas when you try to blend the, all the perfectly flat pieces that came out of the drum sander with those pieces that I sanded and hand planed, they're just, there's a little bit of inconsistency in there that again, I'm just gonna have to fix it with some hand tools. So not a big deal, but when I do the other three sides where I'm gonna do it all through the drum sander, it just means that we're gonna come out nice and perfectly flat on all, all the pieces and they're just gonna go together a lot nicer than even this side that I've got here. And this looks absolutely beautiful. And so on this side right now, I haven't gone through and done the finished sanding on any of these pieces. They're only sanded up to 120 grit on the drum sander here. And so the reason I only went to 120 on the drum sander here is because that's all I have. The store here in Calgary where I bought this thing from doesn't really stock or have a good supply of the, uh, the pre-wrapped belts or the pre-cut belts. So I've ordered a few from Quebec and they should be here in, yeah, I think about a week or so. So not super fast, but fast enough for me. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and hand sand all of this anyway, because I'm not too worried about it taking too much time. Again, I'm just gonna go over this with 180 grit hand sanding and that will clean up all of the drum sander marks. So yes, typically what I would do is, especially if I'm doing something like this where I'm putting a lot of pieces through at once, uh, and especially if I had this at the beginning, I would have done this just on all the pieces in general. And so the way we're gonna go about doing this is with 120 grit sandpaper on the drum sander, we're gonna start with all of our cross pieces because these are our outermost thickness. Again, on all these pieces, I wanna start doing some staggered depths and staggered thicknesses because you guys know how much I like that. And so we're gonna start by doing those pieces. Then we're gonna go over to the router table, put a chamfer on all those pieces. Then we can start working all of our inner pieces on the drum sander so that they all exactly match the thickness and the chamfer on our horizontal divider. So it's a very, it's a little bit more of an in-depth process, but it does work very well. This side came out beautifully following basically that, that process. And I'm really excited to get started on, on the other three sides. And so what I really like about using the drum sander here is you set the machine to be a specific height. You run all the pieces that you need to through it. Then you move on to the next height and you just constantly are running those pieces through. It's not like hand sanding or hand planing where you're just constantly working one piece at a time. You're working multiple pieces at a time. You're just constantly passing them through and you're just knocking stuff out a lot faster. That's the whole reason I wanted this thing is just to get stuff like this exactly done a lot quicker. And so then once we have all of our pieces fit up, so we have everything sitting just below the bevels, we're then gonna go in and sand all of the walnut panels. Again, not gonna do anything super crazy on them. They're not super rough as it is. Uh, they came out of the plane are really smooth, so I don't wanna hit them too hard with the drum sander here, but I wanna hit them just enough to take off some of the planer marks that are on there. Okay, so this drum sander thing is definitely gonna take some getting used to because in my brain while I'm doing it, it really seems like it's just taking so long to get things done and I just feel like I need to go back to the hand plane and break up that sanding block and just go for it. But then I realized that to do all these pieces for three of our side panels took me under just under an hour to get done. Uh, and so that is absolutely ridiculous. And so the pieces aren't completely done. They're probably, they're not ready for finish just yet. Although they definitely could be. 120 grit is a pretty, is you know, is a decently high enough grit that you could finish on here if you want, but there's still definitely some marks in that from the drum sander. And so in the future, what I would do now is I would go and swap out the uh, 120 grit belt that I have in there for a 150 or a 220 grit belt when I finally get those but I don't feel like waiting another six days for that stuff to get here, so I'm just gonna go on to hand sanding hand. Thank <laughs> you. 